So now we're ready to set up our machine, wind a bobbin, and thread it. So first of all, the big picture, how a sewing machine works, there's an upper thread and there's a lower thread. So we're gonna start by taking care of the lower thread. You want to open your bobbin compartment, which is this clear piece right here by the presser foot. And there's a slider to the right of it. We're gonna slide it to the right. It's gonna pop open and we're gonna remove the cover. Inside, you will find an empty bobbin. A bobbin is essentially a baby spool that we're gonna put thread on. So we're gonna set this aside for a second and we're gonna go in our storage compartment and we're gonna grab a spool cap. We're gonna need this for our thread. Your machine comes with a couple extra bobbins, so in case you need to get some more or fill them if you fill all the ones that come with the machine, make sure that you buy Singer Class 15 transparent bobbins. See, these are the bobbins that are designed to work with your machine, so these are the bobbins that are gonna work the best and make your machine sew the best, the Class 15 transparent bobbins. Okay, so we're gonna take our thread, our sewing thread, and we're gonna put it on the spool pin. That is a horizontal white bar that's on the top of the machine. And we're gonna take the spool cap, and we're gonna put it right on the other end to keep our thread on the spool pin. Now, if we look at the top of our machine, there are a few little diagrams that are gonna help you remember how to thread your machine for both winding a bobbin and for sewing. So first we'll look at this little diagram. The dotted line is the thread path for winding a bobbin. I'm gonna take my thread tail and I'm gonna look at the diagram. You'll see the first stop is this little thread guide right here. So you can go behind it and just hook it right through that little guide like that. The next stop is the bobbin winding tension disc, which is this piece right here. It looks like a screw. We're gonna do just what the picture shows and we're going to bring the thread around it like this. It's very important that the thread goes under the head of the screw and above the washer. You should kind of slip it under the head of the screw and feel a little resistance on it. Once you tug on it, once it's under there, you know it's in the right spot. Now we're going to take our bobbin and look at the flat sides. There's a little hole in each side. You can just choose one of the sides. It doesn't matter which one. There's no top or bottom. You're going to take the thread and thread it up through one of the holes from the inside to the outside. So again, we're starting in the middle, the inside of the spool, and we're coming out the top like that. We'll grab our thread tail, hang on to it, Take your bobbin and push it down on the spindle over here. This is the bobbin winding spindle. You wanna make sure you push it down all the way. If you don't, you might accidentally wind thread under the bobbin, and that's not what we wanna do. To tell the machine we need to wind a bobbin, we're going to pop that spindle over to the right. That's gonna put the machine in bobbin winding mode, and it'll know that you have to wind a bobbin. So now we're ready to wind it. So we're gonna hold onto the tail of our thread, and we're gonna push on the pedal. It'll start winding. If your bobbin isn't winding very fast, then take a look at your speed control, because remember, this is the uh, maximum speed of the motor, which also winds the bobbin, so you can turn that speed all the way up and it will wind faster. After you wind for a few seconds, we'll stop and we'll trim the thread close to the bobbin because the tail's buried, it's not gonna come undone. And you can just keep filling until your bobbin is full. It will stop automatically. If you're only gonna sew for a little bit, you can stop earlier, but if this is your first bobbin, you might as well fill it up all the way. Once you're finished, you're gonna undo what you did, so you're gonna pop this back over to the left, and you're gonna take the bobbin off and cut the thread anywhere to separate it. And now you have a beautifully wound bobbin. The next thing we'll take care of is the upper thread. So for now, we're gonna set our bobbin aside. We're going to unthread our thread from our bobbin winding path. And now we're gonna thread the upper thread. If you look at the top of the machine, again, there's some arrows and diagrams to help you know how to thread it. Before you thread, though, you wanna check two things. First, you wanna make sure your presser foot is up. So remember, there's a lifter right here that can move your presser foot up and down. You wanna make sure that that is up. You also wanna look for your take-up lever, and you wanna make sure that that is all the way up. If you can't see it, go ahead and turn the hand wheel towards you until you see your take-up lever. So the first stop for our upper thread is the same as for bobbin winding. It's this first thread guide. So you're gonna hold the thread and just go behind it and forward to get it right in that first thread guide right there. The second stop is this white piece. So you're going to go behind it and then kind of just floss it right in there underneath that white piece. 
you'll go down this channel right here, do a U-turn around this white piece. For the take-up lever, you're going to mimic what this arrow is doing on the top of the machine. So you're going to start on the right, you'll go back, over, and then bring the thread forward. It's really important that the thread catches in the front of the take-up lever, so make sure you see the thread right in the front there before you keep going. The next stop is another thread guide right below this arrow right here. So we're going to slip it behind on the right like that. And the very final stop before the needle is one last thread guide, which is this horizontal bar right above the needle. So I'm going to hold the thread horizontally and again, just kind of think of flossing. We're going to floss it right in there so that the thread is behind that horizontal bar. To thread the eye of the needle, you can do it manually if you want. You'll thread it right through the eye front to back or you can use the needle threader that's on the machine. To do that, you want to first make sure the needle is in the highest position, very important. And we're going to take our needle threaded level, lever, push it down, and you want to snag the thread in this first hook, and then bring it around under these prongs and let go. And it's going to pull the thread through the eye of the needle in a little loop. You can grab that loop and pull the thread the rest of the way through. Now our needle is all threaded. So now we have to put our bobbin in. We are going to take our bobbin and it's going to go right here in the bobbin compartment. So now we're ready to put our bobbin in. We're going to hold it like the letter P. We're going to imagine this is the stem of the P, this is the top part. Holding it just like that, we're going to drop it in the bobbin compartment and then we're just going to follow the arrows. So we want to pull the thread up to this arrow and then down and around, do a little U-turn around this piece and come down here for the final arrow, and the thread will get cut by a little blade in there. At this point, we can put the cover back on the bobbin case. The very last thing we need to do is use the upper thread to draw up the bobbin thread. To do that, we're going to hold on the upper thread with our left hand, and we're going to hand crank through a full down and up of the needle. So I'm going to hand crank the wheel towards me, and when I'm holding the left thread with some tension, you'll see that it grabbed the bobbin thread and pulled it up. And here's the tail of it right here. So now we are all ready to sew. I'm just going to take the upper thread, put it through the foot and towards the back of the machine, and we're good to go. Now that our threading is all done, it's time for us to do a little test sewing and just double check that we did everything correctly. So I'm going to go to a regular straight stitch. That is the number one on your direct selection menu right here. That's a good stitch for sewing a seam, so that's what we're going to test. And we can just go with the default length and width settings right here that the machine sets automatically. I have a little test swatch here of the fabric that I'll be sewing my real seam on. I'm going to take it, we're going to put it under the presser foot. To the right of the foot, you'll see a bunch of lines. These are your guidelines for sewing seams. So I'm going to choose the 5 8 inch line right here and follow that. Keep the right edge of the fabric along that line as I sew and that's how I'm going to sew straight. So we'll put our pressure foot down to get ready to sew and we'll push the pedal and just sew right along this edge. Alrighty, when we get to the other side, we'll stop, lift our pressure foot, and cut our thread on the thread cutter, and take a look at our stitches. Looks pretty good from the front, and we'll flip it over, and looks good from the back too. So it looks like our threading is good to go. If your stitching doesn't look quite like this, if it looks a little bit wonky, like maybe you have some loopy threads, or the back is starting to get all tangly and thread nest looking, then this might be a sign that you need to re-thread. So if your stitching looks like this, you can go ahead and unthread the top and the bottom threads and then re-thread and give it another go at testing.